Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 118 of the Peak of Serenity podcast. I am, as always, one of your hosts, Emelson. And joining me, we have my co-host, uh, Namali. Hello. And uh, this week, we have some pretty exciting news about the Dragonflight expansion. We got a big oh, yeah. profession overhaul breakdown that actually has like a ton of details sometimes these very early posts are mostly like fluff and trying to get people hyped but this one actually has a very substantial amount of detail in it so yeah. uh there's a lot for us to go through there we also got two talent trees that we're going to briefly like mention uh and i killed the jailer so yay yes uh yeah Speaking of, uh, how was your raid this week, Adam? So we're we're still off, actually. <laughs> you took this week off. We yeah, we took we we have this week off. We actually have next week off too. Um, next week was always going to be a week off just because we're missing, I think, three people to vacation. Yeah, uh, including our main tank or one of our tanks and uh, raid leader. So, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that would be we weren't going to raid regardless. Um, and uh, and yeah, so we took this week off. This is our typical like kill the last boss take a week off is what we've done in the past right by the past like seven seven or so tiers that we've done so no it's been it's been really really i guess chill i've been playing a lot of actually burning crusade classic nice, uh, nice. I hit level, level 60. 70 yet no i but i am level 68 and a half nice. uh going to nether storm now um on my little shaman hanging out there and then i did a mythic plus last night oh uh, on God. retail for the first time in like two months <laughs> uh which was fun so yeah no i just been really kind of taking it easy um honestly getting super hyped for dragon flight um reading a lot of the stuff that's coming out i actually did a wish list so okay. a little preview but the wowhead wish list for monks should be out um maybe by the time you listen to this if you're watching live they're not out yet but nope. um, they're out in the next couple of days nobody so. has asked me about my brewmaster wish list so i don't know what the status of that one is maybe maybe laryl <laughs> is planning to do it himself which is fine he knows what he's doing but nobody's asked me yeah, I know. I know. Babs was uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Soliciting a bunch yeah. of feedback from the Windwalkers. Um, I did a little bit for Miss Weaver, so yeah. Um, but those should be out shortly. But yeah, that's all I've been doing. It's been pretty yeah. chill. So, yeah. How was uh? How so? You killed you killed the jailer, but you killed pre nerf jailer, right? Yes, we got it on Sunday. Um, nice. only took forty five minutes of overtime. We did kind of overtime. Bad. Um, and that's actually. There's a lot of guilds that don't normally do any overtime like ours that did a little bit to try and sneak in pre-nerf. Um, and we were one of them. We we were actually, we benefited a lot from the fact that this past Monday was July 4th in the United States. Well, I mean, it was July 4th everywhere, but it was a holiday in the United States, which meant a bunch of people were off work. Um, we end raid an hour earlier on Sunday than we do on Friday so that people can get up in the morning for work on Monday. And um because of july 4th we were able to actually just like we asked you know hey you know dm an officer if you can't do overtime or don't want to do overtime and mm -hmm. you know everybody was like i can do more raid because of july 4th or you know they were people that already were in a different time zone and so it was already really early for them anyway so they could do an extra hour and uh 45 minutes later we got the jailer um very very spicy kill um nice. <laughs> at the end of it uh i somebody stood in defile oh okay somebody stood in defile uh interesting and just like people die you just lose people <laughs> because defile right um yeah, yeah, yeah. and i try and make a hero play which is mistake number one don't do that <laughs> uh and taunt the boss to try and get it out of the defile and then more people stand in the defile and it grows even further and it, yeah, that was wasted but in the process I of course am a tank I have execution sentence on me or death sentence or whatever it's called and I get I have the first meteor cleave debuff from the first meteor cleave so oh, I, no. he walks over and he just one shots me oh, and, no. and suddenly oh there's some execution sentence puddles for people to catch or death sentence puddles for people to catch <laughs> we killed it 
You made we it through it, it. But we killed it Poach. with like two people alive when if like we had been a little bit cleaner, we would have had like 18 people alive, right? Like we made yeah, it into yeah, yeah. phase four with everybody alive with multiple battle reses and, and all this oh, stuff. Oh gosh. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just almost threw it away. Um, but yeah, phase huh. four is, was a complete joke. It's even more of a joke now. Like the whole fight, the nerfs are very big. I was right, going right, to right. like talk some about our phase four strat, which I thought was actually very good. We adopted it from another guild and the whole strat was basically don't move. Don't right. move pump damage. And that was basically like the strat. Um, I don't even know if it's worth talking about that now because <laughs> of all the nerfs. I don't know. Um, That's, yeah, that is the, the current strat right now, right? It's, uh, anyway, <laughs> you see people. So some of the guilds that killed it this week uh, are bloodlusting to basically skip phase three, and then they do phase four because phase four is easier, and yeah, already shorter. So um, it's very very strange times. Yeah, on that fight. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, and I know I was checking uh, prog stats a little earlier today, and I noticed the it had a very uh, the jailer kill is at a very similar Halandris launch yeah. point. We've got uh, right a, after we've got... the. Uh... <laughs> We went from, so last week we had 65-ish kills of Mythic Jailer. This week we're at about 130. Yeah. 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 Uh, just a, a, a launching point of, uh, of, of kills, which is, which is always funny. So Yeah. But yeah, it's, no, it's, it's awesome that you got it pre- I, I think um, there was, there's a lot of talk about this, but I think getting it pre nerf probably felt a lot better for you guys than yes. like walking in there like, this friday and taking like four pulls and killing it and being like yeah, yeah this is kind of anticlimactic that is what happened with halandris this year and that is actually what motivated us to actually ask about overtiming on sunday is like we had it happen on halandris and it just like completely like crushed like the excitement of killing the boss on halandris it also happened to us back in the day when they gutted jaina um like we were oh, okay we took significantly longer in bod than basically any other tier that we've done um and jaina we were there we were progressing jaina when the final round of nerfs hit and just completely destroyed the boss and we yeah. we went from like not quite making the phase three damage check to just like it and effectively one shot I, I think it actually took us like two or three pulls because it's why it's just silly falling off the boat kind of stuff right yeah but it was completely anticlimactic it's just like well that's over now <laughs> yeah and then now the tears over yeah that's uh gosh yeah that's that's awesome though that you got it before the uh before the nerfs came in which made i guess how was how was reclear this week because you, you you said you yeah. rated right yeah so we are reclearing normally we would do like you guys are doing and take the week off um and that was actually yeah. my initial thinking is we were going to take the week off but then we asked people, and we had most of the raid was like, yeah, I actually wanted to go back and do farm. Like, doing farm sounds like fun after we've been in Jailer for, for so long. Uh, <laughs> That's they wanted, awesome. They want to kill with different bosses. So yeah. we, uh, we went back in, and it's partially motivated, so we're actually going to be extending again, unless we somehow killed Jailer tonight again. Uh, oh, okay. Which is maybe possible, but we've got more bosses to get through before we get to him. Um, yeah. Because... We have a couple people that really, really want their CE achievements and don't have gotcha. it yet. So mm -hmm. our plan is basically to um, take uh, whatever, however far we get tonight. There's a slim chance that we maybe don't extend if we like somehow manage to get through, you know, ten out of eleven tonight. I don't know if we'll right. extend or if we'll just go back in next week um, with a fresh one and just rely on clearing the first 10 slightly faster and then rely on killing the jailer in in time um mm -hmm. or we might extend and then next week would be our break week because we'll get the people that want ce achievement and then gotcha and then like take the rest of the week off um but yeah pe that's fair people want ce and the season four cutoff is fast approaching like let me let me real quick check how many lockouts we have left so this coming Tuesday for NA is one lockout. Yep. Then one, so three total lockouts remaining. Yeah, which is point. not, not a lot left. Yeah. 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 So it's uh, 
Like, we're not planning on getting the jailer tonight. There's a chance we could, but we're not planning on it. <laughs> um, we have 21 from our roster. Actually, I think actually maybe exactly 20 from our roster that are available tonight. So gotcha. we are rating with literally just the people that we have. Mm. Um, and that means that stuff like jailer assignments would be really difficult to do. Oh, yeah. You'll have to, like, redo all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. That is not... So, uh, not the plan, exciting. The people that we have out had out that we wanted that want the achievement are literally like one for one swaps. We can just swap out a holy paladin for a holy paladin and a oh, that's uh, cool. a uh, boomkin for a boomkin and be done. And like they can literally take over their assignments and just do do the fight. So yeah, not not bad, not bad. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, I hope I hope you get it hope you get get through it for sure but um but yeah no we uh it'll be interesting to see how we do on our reclear in in a week now so that only gives me i guess two lockouts to to get a jailer kill so yeah see if we can pull I it mean, off i can say from our reclear so far the uh boss that actually has taken us the most time we have not reached anduin yet i've been told anduin is the real like kick in the teeth still like that was yeah. the one that determines whether you for for Guilds of the Venry Clearing, that's the one that determines whether you one night clear or not. Mm-hmm. Um but I would not underestimate Prototype Pantheon. And that's I think okay. we didn't have enough damage on the necrotic ads. We also, with our scuffed comp, didn't have enough damage to just ignore all of them, so we did have to kill them. Gotcha. So like we were in that kind of awkward point where we couldn't do the what is now the normal farm strat of just ignoring all of the ads and you just push the bosses. Yeah. Um, but we also didn't have our old comp that had like three boomkins in it and two affliction warlocks and ju they just like deleted the ads for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so didn't have to worry about we them. had to actually think about killing the ads. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That can be, that can be difficult for sure. Yeah, well, I'll um, I definitely can't wait to to test it out. So we'll have what in two weeks, maybe not next week, but the week after, we'll have uh, we'll have some, I'll have some maybe comments on how our reclear went, see if it uh, yeah, yeah, if we were able to make it through in the in the time we have. So, well, cool. Well, um, well, awesome. We got jailer. I guess we can sort of transition or segue into yeah. some of the the news for the week. Um, and uh, and we got some new. I guess we got some new talent trees uh, on Friday. So. They finally dropped two new talent trees. Uh, it was Hunter and Rogue, so two pure DPS classes. Yep. Um, sort of, sort of dropped, and we got the full, you know, all the different spec trees plus the class specific tree. Um, and I, I, so I don't play a Hunter. I don't play a Rogue. I know nothing about it. I don't know if they're good or they're bad. Um, but it is two more trees. We're now up to five total released, right? Yep, I believe um so that leaves uh what eight more remaining um eight more class yes. uh trees remaining so um Which i don't think we're gonna get an evoker talent tree preview um i i don't think yeah uh, so there's only seven then but yeah i think we're gonna get just an evoker class preview but it's gonna be when like beta is already happening it's gonna be a summary for people that don't like pay attention to wowhead beta updates and stuff yeah, um, makes sense. So the hunters in my guild have been very positive about the hunters. Uh, maybe not so much the survival one. Like survival is mm -hmm. once again getting some changes, but the beast mastery tree uh, they've been very happy about. The class tree they've been pretty happy about. Which I think the class tree structure is very interesting here, where you you can see if you're looking at this on stream, you can just see this. But like the there's a lot of ways to go from like one vertical into another vertical. Which was an issue that we had with the Death Knight talent tree, right? Where it was like three right. columns, one for each spec, and it was very difficult to go from one to the other. So you kind of just like progress down one column, and then mm -hmm. you had to pick a second column to progress down, and it kind of meant that you really, like, it almost felt like every, uh, you had like your spec tree, and then you had three like quarters, uh, like three individual spec trees quote unquote that were right just available to everybody uh the hunter tree is very much not like that there's a ton of ways to go from one vertical into another vertical which gives you a lot of options to like move around and take different things 
Yep. Um, the rogue tree. Not to not gonna spend too much time on this because I'm not the rogue. The rogue tree has the DK kind of structure, um, where there's very much like three verticals, and it's very difficult to go from one vertical into any other. So, for example, right. um, you cannot get to uh, the echoing rec- reprimands talent or elusiveness talent uh, or acrobatic strikes talent, which are all in the class tree. So in theory, they're available to all rogues, but in order to get to them, you have to start at blind, uh, which is the uh, combat slash outlaw rogue uh, starter talent. So if Mm -hmm. you're playing assassination, you have to go try to ignore your assassination stuff for a bit and go down the entire combat tree in order to get down to these talents. Um, So same thing with like cheat death, which is over in the subtlety section of the tree. So it's very different in structure where this is much more like, again, like you have your spec tree and then you have your technically class tree, but it's kind of just three spec trees that are available to all specs. Right, yeah. I I personally, I like the hunter structure better. It feels like you have a more cohesive class tree uh, Yeah, and you have a lot more options. Yeah, exactly. And I think... um... Yeah, very even even slightly. I know we didn't talk about this too much, but I think the priest tree suffers a little bit from this in that the like the shat like if you're a shadow priest, particularly in your like generic tree, you have very little reason to go outside of just the shadow only talents. Yeah. Um so it's yeah, the yeah, I mean we'll we'll see potentially they'll probably do some iteration on the rogue stuff. Um but yeah, the hunter tree looks just by structure wise looks pretty interesting. Um hopefully this means like I think we're we'll talk about this a little bit, but hopefully with alpha on the very near horizon we'll say um that uh we'll get to see if you know these trees being released i guess more frequently right mm-hmm. um because it's only been what like two weeks since the priest tree at this point um it hasn't even been that long um i thought priest tree think, was was last is that the friday before july 4th okay yeah then it's been hopefully we yeah. start getting these you know every week yeah uh, or so get a couple more classes so uh, and hopefully monks soonish um soon we'll, TM. We'll see. We'll see. I don't. I'm not holding my breath. So, um, yeah. Uh, in terms of like, I think we're generally. It's nice that the rogue trees out because I feel like it's always rogues and and monks that sort of lag behind other classes in terms of you know their yeah previews. We'll say. Um. So yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm looking forward to getting getting the monk out. That's going to be very yeah. exciting. Yeah. No. For sure. For sure. Um, all right, moving on a little bit here. Uh, we have Alliance Hall of Fame closing, or should have closed <laughs> this reset. It's actually going to close next reset. They made an announcement and then didn't actually close it. Um, so if you played Alliance, you probably were able to get, uh, you know, Hall of Fame um, with all the Jailer nerfs, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, Alliance Hall of Fame is closing uh, at this reset. So if you haven't killed Jailer yet this week, um, you can try really hard and get in Hall of Fame. Um, and it's only, I think it's only this time two months later than the Horde Hall of Fame. So uh This is the longest yeah. gap there's ever been. Yeah, no, it's just I I they need to do something about it. Cause like if you think about like what Hall of Fame is meant to be, I get that they want to split the factions, but it's like no offense to an, an alliance guild that has killed Jailer now, but like you I don't know if I'd really call you a Hall of Fame guild. That's my opinion, but I, it's like, probably you, wrong. You you're going to get it anyway, you have but... You qualify it. You are an Alliance yeah. Hall of Fame guild. Yeah. And that means a very different thing. Like, yeah, it, it just does. It sucks, but it does. Because most of the Alliance Hall of Fame guilds... Maybe not most. A solid, like, 50% of the Alliance Hall of Fame guilds would not have made the Horde Hall of Fame yeah ex- exactly exactly so i mean it's uh it's good that i mean it's nice that they've closed it they had already opened up cross realm mythic anyway without it being closed um which was and good. so yeah which was nice yeah but yeah alliance hall of fame closed and uh and yeah so get your hall of fame titles um this week if you can if not you'll lose it forever um Next up is actually a really fun announcement. So, oh, Mr. Yabara, uh, Blizzard president, um, old Michael over there, gave an interview, I believe it was Forbes, I want to say. Uh, or sorry, it was the LA Times. LA Times, fault. yeah. Gave an interview with the LA Times and mentioned BlizzCon 2023, essentially 
saying that they are committed to bringing back BlizzCon in 2023, essentially the in-person um, convention. Um, I'm super excited about this. Um, before COVID hit, I had actually put together a plan, like talked to you know my wife and, and talked to some other people and a bunch of some of my friends. We we're actually going to go out to BlizzCon because I've never actually been to an in-person BlizzCon. Yeah. Um, so I'm super stoked about this, uh, yeah. just because I think this will be fun to to get out there, you know, see the West Coast again. I haven't been out there in a couple of years, and uh, and yeah, you know, see some friends, you know, that play WoW, uh, nerd out for a weekend. So yeah, there was a a Geekus Randy crew that went and met up at BlizzCon 2019. Um, yeah, the missed, last one. Yeah, that I missed because I was in grad school and I had deadlines. It just didn't work out. <laughs> Um, and that's so the plan was like, I was going to go to 2020, people are going to go to the, you know, BlizzCon 2020 and then COVID happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just fun. Yep. Fun. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Being able to like go to BlizzCon hypothetically, BlizzCon 2023, that's exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, which will be yeah. I'm I'm also pretty stoked. So hopefully, you know, I, I'm assuming it'll be very similar timing. So like November 2023. So you definitely have some time before, um, before we'll see this. But uh, but no, I think it'll be it'll be cool. It'll be. I'm excited. So um, definitely excited to be super old and go to a video game convention. It'll be it'll be great. I won't be weird at all. Um, that's okay. BlizzCon's a boomer convention anyway. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. Oh, uh, awesome. All right, now back into less IRL stuff, more into the game stuff. Um, Blizzard dropped on us this week um, the pouch of prodigious wonders, uh, which essentially allows you to transfer cosmic flux uh, to your alts. So it's a buy on account item that you can buy on your main and send cosmic flux to your alts. Um, I'm super excited about this one just because I like it's so awful doing Xerath Mortis on a badly geared character, particularly a healer. Uh, which is yeah, normally what most are, of my classes are. Rough. Yeah, which is normally what my classes are. And so trying to get Cosmic Flux for even one Legendary uh, for my Priest has been extremely slow going to the point where I stopped. Uh, but now I'll be able to transfer like the, you know, 30,000 Cosmic Flux I have on my main um, yeah. to, to my ult, which will be nice. So this the, is sort uh, of the final piece, I think, in terms of transferable currency uh, for this expansion. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of funny. Um... There are, even if you don't do a lot, if you're a raid logger and you just log in for a raid, you still probably have 10 to 20,000 Cosmic Flux just sitting on your main that's not being used for anything. Because every, like if, even if you've been doing Jailer Progression for, you know, ages, and that's all you've been doing, Jailer Progression, Raglan Progression, Lord of Dread Progression, the mini bosses before those bosses Actually, Raglan doesn't have one, but the mini boss before the jailer drops 150 cosmic flux. Yeah. So if you've had eight raid nights between that, between like that you spent progressing the jailer, you've killed that thing eight times. You've got like, uh, you know, almost 1500 cosmic flux just from that. Killing the jailer gives 100, which is kind of funny that gives less than killing the trash mob. Oh, that's so funny. Um, uh, but like, you know, you add that up over the whole raid. If you've been raid logging since re the release of the raid, basically every time you go and you kill one of those things, you're getting cosmic flux. You're probably sitting on like twenty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. Uh, it is a. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice it's a nice change to be able to just sort of get that to, um, to your alt because I think. Um, I think, yeah, that's the one sort of biggest hesitation, not hesitation, but like hurdle, right? Is like, there's a lot to do to like gearing up and I get like playing the game and doing Mythic Plus or doing raids, like gear up your alts is fun. I feel like the fact that I have to like do a bunch of world content to gear up my alt is like not as much fun because it's like a very like busy body activity. I'm not really learning or I'm not really engaging with like how my, how I'll play this character in like the content I actually want to do. It's just, yeah. I do a bunch of dailies where I spam smite and holy fire. Uh yeah. On my priest, which is like not how how I want to do it. So no, it um this is a this is a good change. I think Blizzard, I mean, 
awesome that they're doing this now. I think this is one of those things where like, if they just started with this sort of idea of like, currency is transferable, like that makes it better, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's because even oh sorry it's kind of um i feel like there was a major disconnect between how blizzard saw legendaries and how the players see legendaries where the players are like legendaries are mandatory highest high level is mandatory like across all content it doesn't really matter if you're doing heroic or normal or whatever people want right. to see you wearing those 291 legendaries and that means you must have cosmic flux you must have a 291 crafted item right and blizzard is like you can and people can wear low level legendaries like that's fine you can transfer the soul cinders and soul ash already you know why do we need to transfer uh cosmic flux but yeah and I, i think the i think the other thing the other thing too it's not even like i i don't i think that's part of it but i think the other part of it is it's just expensive like, yeah. do I really want to sink like 20, 30 K additional into my alt to get it a lower level legendary and then eventually have to recraft that buy another base yeah. piece that, you know, it's, it's, it's the gold part of it. I mean, not that yeah. like, I mean, I have, I have 4 million gold on my main. So it's like, it's not like I'm hurting for gold and it's not like it's going to cost me that much, but it's just that hold of like, yeah. I don't want to do the same step like the step up piece which is sort of i do other. not have 40 million gold on my ma- or 4 million gold on my main <laughs> so it i definitely feel it when i'm like working on an alt and it's like well do i buy four legendary base items or do i buy two right yeah um yeah birth you're in chat uh it says uh if i think about farming anything besides gear my desire shrinks to zero to play an alt and i think that's actually one of the major things that blizzard kind of missed when right, they were setting yeah. up systems this expansion and last expansion um where like you've got all of these non-gear things to do even things that are quote unquote gear in that they drop as items like conduits uh or the azurite neck piece in in dfa they're not right. really gear right they're not really gear they have an item level but they're not really gear um and and we know that yeah yeah and i I would agree that that sentiment is like i don't i don't mind the like i don't mind like the dungeon grinds like mythic plus grinds doing lfr for like tier sets or or doing that stuff and all but like having me go out in the open world and kill 12 mobs for a quest just so i can get 125 cosmic flux so eventually in two weeks i can make a max rank legendary it's just like so i've I don't want to do that here's the question for you and this is something that i think blizzard has done badly um so yeah. I'm, I'm curious if you know about this uh did you do treasures to get your cosmic flux for your legendaries on your alts no the non-repeatable I... treasures are 200 cosmic flux a piece and you can just fly around and open them yeah but that like okay maybe that would, uh, no i didn't i didn't do that just i think that's because i i started doing dailies to like unlock the the zone because i know yeah. eventually i need to do these to get it and i got like halfway through that and i was like hate this yeah hate this so you just, can like, do quit, all so. of the legend all of the non-repeatable treasures and it works out to like 2800 cosmic flux or something i think there's 14 of them um, maybe oh, okay. maybe there's more so you can get enough basically for two legendaries but that leaves you with nothing to make tier pieces with right right yeah yeah um so you still want cosmic flux in order to make tier pieces are all the are all those are all those treasures available at the like no. just the opening of the zone do you... Though, like there are a bunch that are like you can do uh-huh. enough to get two 291 legendaries i think without doing any of the quests but in order, gotcha. there's a bunch more that require different like unlocks on the box the box i'm forgetting what the 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 different like knowledge things in the the box in the cave i don't remember what it's called oh yeah like the the sopranian knowledge yeah. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that you have to have some of those to get some of the non-repeatable treasures so gotcha yeah that's it yeah and that just seems like yeah, I'm already lost and I'm already over it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, this will this will be. I mean, this is a nice change, and hopefully, it's something they carry forward soon, like, like forward, right? And like, maybe these type of items aren't available on patch release, right? Like, this is something yeah. that comes in like a month into the patch, 
which i think well, is at, fine at right? the same so. time like i don't think they need to time to like delay that if it's too that's true too, yeah. tunes like cosmic flux like cosmic flux was never a limiting factor for a main it just yeah. was not a limiting factor for a main you know day one people had enough cosmic flux for just doing xerath mortis the first time on their main or like to make two 291 legendaries decent progress on making a tier piece which they couldn't even do yet like by the time you could actually make tier pieces with the i'm so bad with me today <laughs> what's the the uh creation the catalyst, cat creation catalyst by, by the time yeah. you could creation catalyst tier pieces on your main you would have so much cosmic flux just from playing the game that it was not a limiting factor so it's really only yeah. alts there was a limiting factor that is in contrast to soul centers and soul ash where they were actually limiting factors so being able to like do soul cinders and soul ash on an army of alts and then mail it all to your main would have been <laughs> a thing that people did or to like progress their main but like with the way that cosmic flux was tuned you would just never do that because you just didn't need it on your main it was the other way around you needed it on your alts and your main had it and it was stuck there right 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 yeah 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 so i mean yeah you're right maybe this is just something they just you know release at the start of of an expansion or start of a patch right and then you get that that whole currency transfer you know but the entire time at the same time no legendaries in dragonflight so maybe this is just a non-issue yeah yeah maybe it just becomes yeah we'll see we'll see how it plays we'll see what sort of how the gearing works because like the I think we'll talk a little bit about it today, but there's some gearing changes in season four that potentially get carried forward in uh in Dragonflight. So um so cool. So yeah, so cosmic flux, you can transfer it to alts um through a BOA item and uh and yeah, get your alts some legendaries. Um next up was it was an announcement. So we'll go over some season four stuff that's coming in. Um so Valor, I guess Blizzard made an announcement. Both Valor and Conquest are going to be reset at the start of season four. Um, Valor will not have a cap, so you can basically jump in the start of season four, farm Valor to your heart's content, um, which will be good. Um, Conquest will have a cap. Um, it'll be higher than any other season, and eventually will be fully uncapped. Um, but yeah, initially Conquest will start with a cap of of some sort. So good change. I mean, I get like season four is sort of the hey let's get crazy season, which I understand, but um, I mean Valor caps are. I don't know. I like. I I feel like Val like because I don't primarily gear through Mythic Plus. Like I've never run into a situation where like I have the time to do more Mythic Plus to get more Valor to upgrade a piece and need that Valor this week. Right. It's always been like I've always been able yeah. to have enough Valor that when I'm ready to do an upgrade, I'll have enough to do it. Right. Yeah. Valor. The Valor cap was just really low for the amount of Valor that it took to upgrade things. Like you needed two full yeah. weeks of Valor to take an item from two sixty two to two seventy two tier right or to take a weapon a two-handed weapon so a, an int staff or an agility staff or any two-handed strength weapon to mm -hmm. um to like 10 eye levels right and that it, it was like tuned in parity to the conquest cost to just buy a weapon like you needed about that amount of conquest about two weeks worth of conquest to buy a weapon which is very, mm -hmm. very different. Very, very different. Like ten I upgrading ten eye levels on a weapon is very different from just outright buying one. Like they just are not right, the same yeah. thing. Um so I definitely ran into the Valor Cap a few times where I wanted to like upgrade my Pox Storm. Like I got a Pox Storm and a file from Plaguefall fairly early this season. I wanted to upgrade both of them. Gotcha. And yeah. Just couldn't. I was running into the conquest or the Valor Cap. Um the conquest cap the reason that i think they are maintaining a higher cap but still a cap on that one is because it does let you buy gear um it lets right. you directly just buy gear and that would be like for people that are playing season four that would be probably just the best way to gear it may still be one of the best ways to gear and that's okay if it's one of the best ways but like just being able to straight up like grind arenas for conquest on week one and just buy a full set of you know max eye level Conquest gear mm -hmm. is um maybe not desirable. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah, which which makes sense. So um but yeah, everything's getting reset, which 
I think it's a good thing. Um, no, no reason to hoard as much as much um, valor as you can. Note on that one, and this is a note on the Wowhead post as well. There are boxes that you can buy. There's a vendor next to the Flight Master in Oribos. Uh, mm -hmm. There, that you can buy boxes from them for valor and for conquest that you can send to alts with like catch up gear. Um, so right. if even if you don't have an alt now, you can go and you can buy the boxes with valor and conquest before the patch. And yeah. just hang on to them, and then you go. You know, if you make an alt in season four, you can kickstart them. They won't have like current season eye level stuff, but they'll have, you know, season three eye level stuff, which is still a good jump over questing gear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is. I think I did that. I did that with my priest. It's unfortunately is a random piece of gear, so you can kind of mm -hmm. get screwed. Um, but uh, but no, it is a, it is a good way to to sort of um to um. To supplement or sort of augment some of that, and it is you can use it in the creation catalyst too. Yes, which is which is good. It is because real mythic plus gear. slash PvP gear, so you can go and creation catalyst it. Unlike the vendor gear and the world quest gear from Dareth Mortis. So if you get right. a chest piece from that, you can take it to the catalyst and use it. Which was actually an issue that I ran into trying to gear up my mage. Is I just I had enough cosmic flux to create uh, multiple tier pieces. But I didn't have any base items that were usable in the creation catalyst. Oh, man. So I could not craft my four piece. I was stuck at three piece with no no ability to make the four. Oh Jesus. Yeah, that's that's rough. That's rough. Um so yeah, so a couple of a, a nice, I guess a nice little valor change there. Um uh, conquest stuff. Um next up is Blizzard did do a little bit of clarification on some of the new currency you'll acquire in season four, uh, particularly from the faded bosses. So there's a new currency, if folks aren't aware, uh, that drops from faded bosses. Um, you'll use this currency to buy faded items um, from a vendor. I believe you get three faded items you can purchase. Um, yeah. So it's not like an unlimited amount. You get three of them, and you basically collect this currency by doing uh, by killing faded bosses. Um, and I think there's a little bit you can do some quests too to get some currency also. Um, so what Blizzard said is in the current iteration, um, it takes about six weeks. To if you kill ten bosses per week over the next over the opening six weeks, you'll have enough currency to buy your three full items. Um, they're lowering that basic duration to about four and a half five weeks. Um, so if you kill ten bosses a week for the first four and a half weeks or five weeks, you'll have enough currency to buy three full faded items. Um, so lowering the general amount of time it takes to get your your currency, your full amount of currency, um, and they're also um, I guess it's based on um, doing quests too those quests will change over the course of the season where you'll lower the amount of kills you need um to actually get the currency to uh purchase these faded items so right Very they've already sort of talked about the catch-up mechanic i guess yeah sorry they've already started to mention catch-up mechanics for alts after like the initial like season launches so yeah basically a way to kind of like cosmic flux and the creation catalyst to come in and be able to pick up those items earlier like more quickly on your alts and maybe that just kind of pans out to being able to pick up multiple of the quests at the time like maybe the quests just like like if you can pick up two at a time um later in the season and just like have your quests or your boss kills effectively count double because you have two quests that might that might be the trick um they also um confirmed that like we had speculated uh the cutting edge mounts are staying where they are 100 percent drop rate till the end of the expansion um right. so that's nice they also confirmed which was not expected that the heroic jailer mount that is currently tied to ahead of the curve um will be staying around for season four so if you don't have that yet from heroic jailer you'll be able to get it in season four mm-hmm yeah, yeah, which is uh, they, this is sort of in line with what they've always done. Um, I know season four is a little bit of a different type of patch, but um, the uh, the they've always sort of kept the mounts 100 percent drop rate over the course of a, over the course of an entire expansion until the next one launches. Typically, with the pre patch for the next expansion, they'll sort of drop those mounts to the one percent drop rate they are. Yeah, uh, for older raids. So. Um, so yeah, so it's uh it's it'll be it'll be interesting or sorry it's it's good news for everybody who still wants to farm those mounts. I'm excited. I don't know if I'll get a mount. Before, I probably won't get a mount before season four, yeah. but I'll be able to get my mount from a Jailer 
uh, from Mythic Jailer. Um, it does also everything's good. The catch up stuff is really nice, knowing that like I don't have to worry about trying to get in all ten boss kills on an alt every week in early in the season. In order right. to get my three dinar and to buy my three items, I can just like chill, do my main, and then later in the season I'll be able to pick up an alt and get through the the quests to get the dinar more quickly without having to do the whole like five weeks or whatever it ends up being of uh right. of boss kills. Right, yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, nice uh nice little clarification from Blizzard on that. And yeah, hopefully makes alts playing in season four a little better. So real quick before we move into kind of main topic stuff, um, mm -hmm. do you know what your guild is planning to do for season four? No. I'll be completely honest with you. I I, I think the idea is gonna end up being is we typically want to farm as many mounts as we can. So my uh, my assumption is we'll continue to probably prioritize um Sepulcher until we get the skip. Yeah. And then basically do the skip or use the skip to farm a mount and then any leftover time for a raid week, do the faded raids. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for us is actually gonna be how the faded raids are tuned. Yeah. Right. I think we've talked Same. about this a little bit, and I've Same. I've mentioned this is like if they're if we have to reprogress Mythic Sylvanas in a week, we will probably just not do Mythic Faded Raid. Like, it, yeah. it's just like, it doesn't make sense to, you know, wipe or, or know you're going to step into a boss fight and know you're going to wipe for four or five hours, right? That's just not, yeah, that's we still not don't have time in the week. Right now. Yeah, exactly. And, and we've already done those boss fights, we've already progressed them. Um, so I think it's all going to depend on how the Mythic Raids are tuned. Um, and if they're tuned in a way that, like, yeah, we can use six hours out of our eight hours a week to go in and clear a faded rate. Awesome, let's go do it. Yeah. If it's like, hey, we're not... I, I guess the other thing, too, is... Well, they're based on kills, right? Because I was thinking, too, like, the skips still work. Yeah. So, like, is the idea, like, you still if you still have I mean, to kill ten bosses regardless... Yeah, you, know, you could go in and kill, like, four... Like, you don't... It doesn't care if they're mythic kills. They can be heroic kills. You can go in and you can do four, like, true. your... If it's Sanctum Week, you can go and do Terragru, then skip to Elthazad and uh, Savannah's and take three kills and go mm -hmm. kill Guardian because it's free. Um, yeah. And take your four kills and then go and get the rest on Heroic or Normal. And like people can do that on their own time. It doesn't have to be part of Raid. And since That's it's, true. It's, you know, chill Season 4 stuff. They don't even necessarily have to do it. They're just going to progress more. They're going to get their Dinar stuff more slowly if they don't yeah exactly that's true that's true so it doesn't have to be yeah within the within the group but i mean i i'd say that what we'll end up doing is really just sort of prioritizing jailer mounts and yeah. then any leftover time head into whatever the faded raid that that week is um i, I think that's likely similar to what we're doing um yeah. i don't know what we're doing yet either uh we have a we do a big post progression survey every every tier to like see what people want to do with farm and see what people think about our prog and all this other stuff um, and yeah. we have not gotten all the results back from that yet, so I don't exactly know. Like, we have a section in that on Season 4 that, like, we only have, like, half the raid that's filled it out right now, so... Uh, gotcha. Still figuring that one out, too. But I think that's pretty likely that we also prioritize GLR mounts. And then whatever extra time, maybe we do uh, the Faded Raids, depending on if they're tuned to be fun or not on farm bosses. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I think that's, yeah, that'll be, like, I think I've, I have definitely said this before on the podcast, it's just I, I want them, I want Blizzard to basically make them, like, heroic plus type encounters, right? Like, I don't want to, yeah. I, want, I want maybe, like, four or five wipes to Sylvanas, and then we kill it, and it's great, right? Uh, you cut out. Anam? Can you hear me? This is awkward. We can't hear you, Anam. I can see you, though, so... All right, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that was weird. My audio engine crashed. Um, I don't know where you... I don't know where I left off. All I was saying is that I like crushing bosses. I hope they're easy so that you can fly through them because now you have a bunch of gear and it's more fun that way. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yep. Um. Cool. 
I guess, I guess we move into the main topics. I guess we, we've sort of two topics. We talk a little bit about professions, but I think briefly we'll talk about sort of the elephant in the room is alpha. Um, so on Friday, um, a bunch of blue or sorry, a bunch of battle net launcher stuff got updated with, um, entries for the alpha. Um, so this is basically not that, um, the alpha was actually live or launched or anything like that. It was just like a bunch of the data that sits behind the launcher was updated to basically make references to Dragonflight Alpha. Um, and so this is typically one of the, I think there's probably like three or four things that Blizzard needs to do to get the alpha out uh, side of its company. This is one of those, right? Uh, basically allows you to select the alpha in the launcher, download a client if it was out there, data if it was out there, and then log in if servers are up. Um, so this occurred Friday. Um, I think with um, Shadowlands, they were saying, I read a couple tweets that basically in the Shadowlands example, they did all these updates for Shadowlands Alpha, and then the next week, Shadowlands Alpha actually was was kicked off. Um, so along with this change, a bunch of other sort of people, we'll say news, other people tweeting out there, have basically almost confirmed that Alpha is starting this week coming up um, with the idea that press will get Alpha, you know, probably Tuesday, Wednesday with the larger sort of influencer streamer, friends and family getting it, you know, Thursday, Friday timeframe. Um, so which is, uh, which is fun. We'll say um, this, I will say that I'm not going to name any names, but this is in line with a lot of the other rumors that I have heard. We'll say from some personal friends um, and sort of, this is when, you know, I think uh, they have also sort of, can all but confirm that this is happening. So um, I think barring any major issue, um, like catastrophic game breaking, you know, alpha just destroys hard drives type thing. Um, we should see it this week. So, yep. Yeah. I do want to mention as well for everybody getting excited about seeing all of the talent trees. Um, it is entirely possible that they release alpha and have some classes disabled, like entirely disabled, or you can log in, but they don't have a functioning talent tree yet. Um, this early in alpha, that's entirely possible. Um, like it may not be possible to create an invoker or an evoker. It may not be possible to like create, create a monk, or you might create a monk and you might go and look at your talents and see it's totally empty. Um, yeah. and that's just... That's how it is uh, this early in, in the alpha beta cycle. So I'm hopeful that this means we'll get to like hop in and play Monk uh, this week. Uh, fingers yeah. crossed. I'm on the friends and family list this time around. Fingers crossed. That means I actually get in. I had an email change on my BNET account. So fingers crossed. That doesn't mean <laughs> that I got bumped from the list. I did. Ew. I did let my 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 uh, inside person know that uh, my email changed. So yeah, get them to update that. that yeah, list. yeah, um, yeah. No, yeah. That'll be. I. I will. I. I don't. Know if people remember this, but when Shadow when Shadowlands Alpha launched, particularly Torghast, Torghast was only available for like two classes. It was like Mage yeah. and one other class. Um. So it's not unheard of to see Blizzard launch an Alpha and like have entire classes disabled um from being able to be played yeah um and so yeah i mean i i would i would all but assume that if a class hasn't seen its talent preview posted yet that you more than likely to your point either can't even create one or it's just a blank tree or to be fair it, it's a placeholder tree like maybe yeah. the monk tree when you open up talents is nothing but hunter talents right yeah um so so yeah but yeah no i think fun exciting i mean i'm more excited for next week's episode at this point um than this week's episode but um yeah we should see alpha and some content uh coming out um this week for the game which will be exciting um so so yeah um and hopefully I'm, i mean i don't know if i'm any on, a, on any lists yet if not i'll have to ping some people maybe see if i can uh slide in there so um yeah, but yeah we got oh. one other major major blue post last week and actually very like uh, let's just before we get into it very long like unusually long lengthy and in-depth blue post yeah for something like this like i i actually i i was thinking back i don't think and we're, we're talking about the professions right but i don't think we got this in-depth of a blue post on like azurite armor when it came out no i mean azurite <laughs> right? armor was non-functional for most of the beta but 
but yeah. I'm just I'm just saying like whoever is writing and doing like the community stuff for Blizzard like like got like clap for that yeah like this was this was cool they they have said for a long time that they want to be better about communication they want to they yeah. want to communicate not just how something is you know what it is but also what the intent behind it is and why they're doing things and yeah. um thus far for this expansion they have for for dragonflight they've been doing a very good job of like explaining why the talent tree revamps are happening explaining their philosophy for talent trees and now explaining uh what the new crafting systems are going to look like and why they're making these changes um so there's still some things that are left up in the air as far as the intentions and the why but um there's a lot that's not and that that comes out in this in this big post on the wow this is actually a post on like a, not just a blue post it is actually a yeah. post on the world of warcraft site um so uh you wanna you wanna get started with the work orders stuff yeah yeah so they gave a little bit of a preview with how work orders are going to going to sort of happen and, and a little bit more detail which i which i think is cool so if people aren't aware work orders are essentially things where you as someone who wants to buy a piece of crafted gear can use an auction house like interface to request that piece of gear to be crafted for you and in it you can like provide some reagents. This includes providing soul, binary, soul bound reagents, which is a new change, which is really nice. Yeah. Uh, along with adding like a, a, a tip or commission for someone to create it. Um, one thing they did sort of, uh, so this is very nice in terms of like, if you need a piece of crafted gear and you have like, I remember what, like the old like items used to drop at the end of heroic dungeons, like were always soul bound, like primal nethers, I think they were called in, in one expansion. And, and those were used to then in the crafting um, system. But if you didn't have a crafting profession to use them they were essentially just dead items for yeah you. they just How hung you out can... in your bags like or you could vendor them yeah, yeah exactly exactly um so yeah so you now can add soul bind items you can post that up and you can request uh something to be crafted on your behalf um the cool thing is you can actually um set filters on who can craft for you so you can send it to anybody you can send it in guild which is an interesting one that actually um, is something that may come into play for our guild. We can have people like we had guild crafters for legendaries in 9.0 before we ran into the brick wall that was the materials requirements. But yeah. we, it's still like there's going to be, we'll get to uh, this later, there's going to be mythic item level gear that you can craft and being able to like put up a work order, like do it asynchronous, like we were doing it through mail. Like you would send yeah. the mail to the crafter with the, legendary you wanted and the missives that were supposed to go in it or you not the missives the the materials that were supposed to go in it um like some of the the vendor ones and they would craft it to, for you and mail it back uh this is going to be so much easier to manage right um so if we have guild crafters if we have like a guild leather worker that goes and levels it up and and um gets all the you know, maybe somebody specializes in certain things and somebody else specializes in other things. You can just, you don't have to, as a raider, know. And you also don't have to put it up for public order and, like, pay a big commission. You can put it up just for the guild and let somebody in the guild handle it. Exactly. Exactly. So that'll be nice. Um, and then the third thing is you can actually post it to a specific player. Meaning, like, this sort of, I think, plays into that idea that Blizzard's saying, like, well, maybe if you're a crafter and you want to craft and making the best leather helms, on your server you'll get a name for that and people will request that you craft their leather helms because you have the best quality one right and that sort of can get right. your name out there um so yes yeah, so this is sort of the work order piece um they also sort of talk a little bit about like optional reagents which sort of sound like missives where like if you want to include that you want like a certain type of stats on this item um you can sort of also include that in sort of the reagents as you set up this work order um and yeah, you just post it and wait for somebody to craft it. And I'm assuming you get the item back at the end of the day. So um, it, is a, it is a very, it seems like a very clean experience for you as a requester of this type of service. So no longer yeah. need to spam trade chat, no longer need to actually buy the full item. They did clarify too, just so we're aware, is that you can actually craft items that would be considered soul bound if the crafter made them themselves. Yeah. Uh, meaning like, if it's a leather working chess piece that's soul bound when you make it, um, you can even request a work or for that. It won't be soul bound to the crafter. You It'll be soul bound to you as the purchaser. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it is so. One thing I think it may be awkward with this is figuring out commission prices if you don't include all of the materials. Um, and maybe right. we end up with like an add-on that does it, but that feels bad. I would like it to just be like, you know, honestly, like the non soulbound stuff. Or, like, I don't know. Maybe w it'll just be conventional that you put all of the reagents in that you as a purchaser are, are able to, like you max out the, the reagents for it, and mm -hmm. then yeah. the crafter does not use any of their own, except what is like soulbound to them. Because they did, like, so, there are some that are soulbound to the crafter and some that are soulbound to the, the requester. And so, right. you know, maybe that just becomes conventional and the commission is literally just like a tip, which is already kind of how it goes. Like, if you get somebody to craft your, you know, leather chest in trade chat, you bring them all of the materials, they craft it, and then hopefully tip them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see something, too, with, like, the commodities markets being now region-wide, right? Like, yes. potentially the ability to, like, sync that up where saying, like, commission is your tip on top of it, and then you as a person who only provide, in this example, like, the website they provided like 14 of the 20 items needed yeah those extra six just up the price you need to post it right yeah. buy whatever the the craft like the the reagent cost is or sorry the yeah and that actually yeah. would be a neat way yeah. to do it if if it's like you know instead of it just being commissioned it's got like cost to complete which is just paying for the remaining commodities at the current market yeah. price and then a commission on top yeah yeah but yeah no first look at it very clean, very easy to use, you know, seems seems like a good change in terms of like making crafting a little bit more of a, a thing in WoW, right? Yeah. Um, which is interesting. So um they then did a little small section, which is probably not what they want to focus on just yet, but on profession specializations, basically just calling out that like you will be able to specialize uh certain parts of your profession, right? This includes both gathering and crafting um and you can be a little bit different than your peers and this is what they talked about in their original um overview of like saying like you can specialize in making the best helms for your thing right. or you can specialize in getting more stuff for each like mining node you hit right yeah um, a little bit like, like that, back so. in tbc as a blacksmith you could have like mace you could so, you yeah. could make the special mace or you could make the special sword but you couldn't make both as the same crafter without like resetting some part of your crafting yeah, I don't remember exactly. That's where, but uh, Stun Herald was only craftable by by the May special. May yeah. yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So um, we'll we'll learn more about that. They they really didn't go into that uh, much, other than to say that it's still something they they have on the table. So, um, and then the bulk of the the profession sort of overview went through sort of the quality section and some actual like profession stats that they have. Um, and how they're sort of viewing both skilling up your profession along with, you know, how these sort of profession only stats interact with it. And so, so looking at it, they basically are going to give you sort of item quality, which functions or looks very similar to like legendary ranks. But in this case, like as you craft a piece of gear, you can, and, and you get better at it um, or craft more of it, I should say, you can increase the quality of that crafted piece, uh, either just through naturally having more skill points or by using some optional reagents that increase the quality just based on adding those into the, into the craft. Yeah. Um, and the idea is like the, the quality then affects the final item level of the piece that you have. Um, but it seems like it's, it's minor, like it's, it's a definitely an increase, but it's like a, ten, their, their, their example is a 10 eye level difference between tier one and tier five. Right. In terms of the crafted piece. And so I want to comment specifically on that. Like I mentioned previously, they were like, there was a gap I felt between how they understood legendaries and how we as players understood legendaries and like people being like, Oh, you have to use the, the max rank one and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, the gap that they, the example gap that they gave between tier one and tier five is less than the gap right now between a rank eight and rank nine legendary. Mm -hmm. It's very minor in comparison. So that's actually pretty big. Uh, I also want to clarify uh, all of the like, well, not all, most of the crafting materials, the gathering, like the mats that you gather are going to have a quality. 
So having more gathering okay. skill means higher quality mats. Whatever gathering specialization ends up meaning, if there is a gathering specialization, that's going to impact oh, material quality. And then it's going to be easier to craft higher quality items with higher quality materials. So there's going to be some complexity that comes in there for the crafter of figuring out, you know, hey, I have my crafting skill and I want to craft, you know, a tier five item. You know, mm -hmm. can I get away with using the less expensive materials because I've specialized in this and make a larger profit because I can use cheaper materials? You know, there's some interesting things there for crafters to figure out some some that's mostly like spreadsheet e stuff, but there's room for spreadsheet stuff to exist in the crafting system. So. Yeah, yeah, so that I mean, that's a it, it, it adds an additional level of complexity within the profession system of like now trying to balance, you know, quality of material, like, like basic materials. Um, and then also like how that potentially influences the quality of what you're trying to craft. Um, uh, particularly if you're like, and, and the way that I was sort of a read, was reading it too, is that it's a, a combination of like your skill in crafting plus the quality of material, like base materials that that influence what the final items quality will be. Meaning like, you can potentially use higher level base materials or consume what what are it, commodities, right? Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to think of the right word. Um, to then boost up the quality of the item that you you make, um, uh, like beyond your skill, which is right, which is an interesting like mini game in crafting adds a, a slight amount of depth to it. Um, so, it, oh sorry, sorry. They I was all... I, I was gonna I was the only thing I was gonna say is like you mentioned the legendary issue. Like I'm wondering if after the initial rush of this like does this just become the legendary issue of saying like okay i only care about rank tier five crafted items right yeah it's definitely um, a possibility i think it depends a lot on how the prices for the different materials pan out and the how the material requirement pans out like if you have to use tier five materials in order to get a tier five item um, right yeah then that could potentially inflate the price of a tier 5 item way more than a tier 3 item because it's the most desirable but if a tier 3 item is only four eye levels lower you know there's going to be a bunch of people where that just makes sense to get the tier 4 item or the tier 3 item and mm -hmm. save you know if you can shave off uh, a quarter or a third of the price by doing that like people will definitely do that it's when they right. have the, like, when it's going from, like, heroic to mythic eye level, it feels a lot worse to do that. No, that's, I guess, I guess that is true. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think the, the other, the other aspect of this, too, is, like, I'm hoping they're thinking about how this system grows over the course of an expansion, too. Yeah. Meaning, like, do we, do we run into the same sort of like tier, like having to restart at tier one crafting for like season two of 10.0's like items, yeah. right? That's a great, great thought. I don't know how they're going to do that yet. And it may actually be that um, like there's new items. One thing that we haven't talked about yet, but they did go into some, there's crafting stats. You're going to have gear that has mm -hmm. crafting stats on it that you use in order to craft high quality items. And so what it may be is that in order to get the high quality items for patch 10.1, you need to first acquire patch 10.1 eye level crafting gear. True. And yeah. that then becomes a limiter. And then the question is, how do you get 10.1 crafting gear? I have no idea. They didn't tell me. So, uh, yeah. But if there's if there's some limiter there, then that leads to a kind of progression where you can't just immediately jump into the tier five crafted pieces, um, as well as actually one thing that we haven't mentioned: uh, the soulbound materials requirements. Actually, we did mention it, but like the soulbound materials requirements, like if you have to have a mythic piece, a mythic soulbound item, in order to get mm -hmm. a soulbound tier five uh, mythic piece crafted then you literally in some cases are not going to be able to buy tier five because you won't have the soulbound materials so you, your That's only true. option as a heroic raider might be to buy a tier four because you don't have the tier five item that's yeah i mean that's that's a fair point um yeah so it, i yeah I, I think it's it'll be it'll be interesting to see how the how the system grows but at least in the base like initial patch this seems really cool with like 
it, it seems much more complex, I'll say. Like we were sort yeah. of, I think we're jumping around a little bit because there's also the idea of like, there are optional reagents, or sorry, they, they call them finishing reagents, I'm sorry, yeah. that can like add stats and, and different things to the crafting process, right? Or, or to you as a crafter. Um, so maybe we talk a little about the stats here. Um, yeah. And so like there, there's, a, there's a handful of stats that, that sort of will help or, or sort of change the way that you craft, one of them being like inspiration, um, which basically gives you a percent chance to craft the recipe with extra skill, meaning higher quality. Um, resourcefulness, which just lessens the amount of resources you'll use um, when you make the craft. Multi-craft is sort of the, if it's a stackable item, procs additional items. So it's like the old potion master or flask master from yep. from DC. And then crafting speed, just craft faster. Um, and so like the idea is like adding these reagents is is sort of a nice to have, particularly if like you focus on alchemy and focus on being a, like your guild's potion person, you'll want to stack as much multi-craft and resourcefulness as you can because you want to sort of try and lessen the amount of mats you use and also get many extra procs, right? Yeah. Um, if you can, if that's even a combination, right? I think the examples they really gave was like inspiration plus crafting speed. So maybe it's only like one of the first three plus crafting speed is all you can stack. Um, but no, it's yeah, it's another... Yeah, it's another like a level of complex, like not even complexity, but like depth within the crafting system um, that I think is is something that it needed, right? I think profession overhaul is is cool, right? Um, yeah. And so they did actually, I thought it was really interesting. They gave the reasoning that they have for including each of these stats. Like the goal yeah. of inspiration is not really to, to be the like min-maxers kind of stat. It's to be, I mean, that you want to get lucky. If you enjoy, yeah. like, crafting it and sometimes getting something better, and, like, you just want to roll the dice and get lucky sometimes, then that's what inspiration exists to do. Um, and you have some amount of base inspiration, probably, that, you know, is going to give everybody some chance to have that occur. But building around that is probably not their intended, like, thing to do if you're really, like... You know, you want to be the potions guy. You want to just like make. Um, right. So yeah, the other thing is they did clarify um, that for consumables, consumables, the end product will not have a quality. Instead, the quality is going to determine something else. They don't exactly know what yet, but the example they gave is like increasing the number of it. So if you're making potions, higher quality means more potions. Um. Yeah. Or if you're making, you know, enchants, maybe higher quality means that you get an additional refund of some of the materials or something like that. Yeah. Which is a little bit Which like a crossing into like the re resourcefulness and the, the multi-crafting stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think that's necessary uh, in order for them to have this quality stuff affect consumables. Like having to buy quality five potions for raid suck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, um, yeah, it'll be, yeah, it'll be, that would be not fun, we'll say. Um, but yeah, and so it, it was, again, very interesting that they're sort of talking about their philosophy. One of the, one of the other things that they talk about, uh, particularly around quality and the fact that we're going to have this sort of scale of quality, is that they sort of want some of this crafted gear, particularly not in every slot, but in like maybe one or two slots, like armor slots, right? You'll actually get a best in slot item right so like yeah. maybe like you can for whatever reason in season one you can craft a really good leather belt and it's just happens to be the best leather belt you can make um for whatever reason right yeah uh, maybe it's because like the opening tier of belts is just bad for your class or, or mean, whatever it ends up being to use an example from this tier there is like the the tier gloves from sepulcher um mm -hmm. are haste mastery or brewmaster and that's bad. Yeah, I mean, it's bad for, for Miss Weaver too. It, it's yeah. not good. And there's not a crit verse set of gloves from the raid. So if there were a 278 or 285 crit verse glove that you could get crafted, you would absolutely do that. Um, yep. Exa yeah, exactly. So it, it'll, again, this is actually, it's, it's get, giving me some very like BC type vibes, right? Or Burning Crusade type vibes where yeah. like, Crafting was important, like your 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 armor or weapon crafting was important, and making it sort of 
important here, I think is a, is a cool thing to open up that part of the game. Um, and I think that's the one thing that like, if we think about this maybe a little bit larger, right. In terms of the way that wow plays today is like, wow is very much centered on like a couple of key pillars. It's like, you have your high end PV PVE stuff, you have your high end PVP stuff. And that's really like the end game, yeah. right? There's not a crafting end game. There's not a, you know, but kind of, is, gonna... but it's not an end game that exists in, in the game in and of itself. Right. It's like this external thing of like trying to own your realms auction house. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's the whole like, and when I say end game, I mean there's not like your goal in the current sort of auction house crafting world is just make a lot of gold. Yeah. Right. Like there's, like there's that's your general end game, and there's not like a hey, I can make this item that no one else in my server can make, right? Or I can yeah. craft this really powerful thing. And I think it's cool that they're sort of starting to look at other aspects of the game and say like, hey, maybe we can build out a system that like maybe only a third or a quarter of the player base will interact with, but it'll be a quarter of the player base that. Really we'll find it. it very fun yeah yeah and stuff like that like it doesn't always have to cater i think to like one of the two and and let's be completely honest with you like pvp sometimes feels like a, a back burner type thing um but like the the it doesn't have to cater to like the the mythic raiders of the world right um yeah. so you know i i think for me this whole like hey you can craft mythic quality gear and potentially it's better than what you can actually get from mythic you know rating or mythic you know high-end mythic plus I'm all for something like this. I think this is really, really cool. They did also confirm we are going to be able to get mythic raid eye level items from crafting. We are going to be able to wear up to five of them at a time, which is a lot of crafting gear. That is a lot, actually. But also, like, so one of the things that happens in Final Fantasy is that when a new tier comes out, one of the things that the really high end players try and do beforehand is get maxed out crafted gear you go and you get your maxed out crafted gear and it's very expensive to get all of the materia slots in it it's super super pricey do that one of the things i think that the the design team here for wow really did correct is that the mm -hmm. mythic eye level stuff is going to require soulbound materials for mythic so you can't yeah. like you're not going to have to as a mythic raider go out and spend two million gold on crafted boes effectively crafted boes um week one of the raid like they're just you're not going to be able to you're going to have to do some mythic bosses to get some mythic soulbound materials and then you can go to a crafter and like maybe you never got gloves maybe you're still wearing heroic gloves or nor god forbid normal gloves and you then go to a crafter and you're like well i've got my soulbound materials i'm going to buy the other mats i'm going to get somebody to make me some mythic eye level gloves with the stats that i want and then later yeah. in the tier, it's like, okay, now I'm going to fine tune my secondary stats with the crafted gear. And like the pieces that I've got, like there's some that are really good for raid. And I'm going to go for Biss, set up combining raid gear with the different, the five different crafted pieces. And that's, I think that's cool. Having the, having the soul bound items come from raid both accomplishes the time gating that they probably want. And also right. functions as like a price control. Like, if the main limiting factor, like the main limiting factor for legendaries in crafting legendaries was just commodities, it was materials. It was not, there was nothing special that you needed to have that limited how many of the legendary base items you could make, which mm -hmm. then led to the price being very dependent on just material, material cost. Um, with soulbound items here, what they can do is they can have the material cost be significantly lower so that it's you know just a lot cheaper to have one crafted right and then shift some of the cost in two places one the soulbound items like it just takes you have to have the soulbound items they don't really have a gold cost because you have to get them yourself um, right and then the second place being the crafting gear that's required and we saw this kind of happen with crafting in shadowlands where when you buy a rank 9 legendary you're not just paying for the materials for the rank nine legendary. You're also paying for all of the materials that the crafter put into getting the ability to make a rank nine legendary. So we're going to see that as well, where like there's going to be when you want to get a tier five mythic eye level item, you're going to be paying not just the materials cost. You're also going to be paying that commission that some of that is effectively going to cover the crafting gear and the other finishing mm -hmm. reagents and other stuff that crafters use in order to make the highest eye level items. 
but that cost for the crafter is going to be amortized across everything that they make instead of being tied to that one specific item slot. And in the case of Leather Leatherworking, one specific armor type, right? Because yeah. like, in order to get a rank 9 legendary in Shadowlands, uh, the recipe for it, you have to craft uh, just a ton of items in order to... that are basically getting thrown away because nobody wants them. Right. Um, that it just in order to gain the ability to craft a 291 in one specific item slot for one specific armor type. So if you multiply that by, you know, the 10 different slots you can do times the two different armor types that Leatherworking can do, for example, that's a huge outlay of gold. And that's something that they actually explicitly stated in this blog post they're looking to not have happen in Dragonflight. Um, so I'm yeah. going to actually quote from the post here because I think it's... Uh, I think it's very important. And I think that we as players have to actually, like, if they fail at this, we have to, like, blast them with this quote in the face over and over <laughs> again until they fix it. Um, so they said, please note, though, that the goal is not to have high-end gear cost anything remotely approaching the costs of top legendaries in Shadowlands. In general... We don't expect the base reagents to be nearly as expensive, and the most of the effort to become highly specialized will be through play, not through spending gold. Even if for a time only a few players can make the best items at the highest quality, getting an item crafted at a lower quality will be much more achievable. Lower quality items will be only slightly less powerful, in contrast to the tiers of legendaries in Shadowlands. Finally, yeah. you'll be able to get lower quality equipment recrafted to higher quality later by a more skilled crafter for minimal reagents. Uh, and they say that there's going to be more details forthcoming on the recrafting system. But that's kind of like, they kind of had that philosophy of, of recrafting, upgrading it for uh, yeah. the Legion Legend or the Shadowlands Legendaries, but it only applied to the Soul Centers in Soul Ash. And. I don't think they really thought that the legendaries were going to be as expensive as they were, or that it was going to be as problematic as, as it was. Uh, right. Be because, you ha like we were talking about earlier, having to buy two different precursor items, base items for your legendary, <laughs> it's just like doubling the amount of gold it's, you have to spend. It's a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's just too much, yeah. Um, no, I, I think that's a, it's a good, good philosophy to take into, into Dragonflight here, and we'll see, yeah, we'll see how it, how it works, how, like, the community reacts to like the quality uh the the quality um the quality of items and like if it's always like hey i only want to buy tier five stuff or if they'll be okay like we'll be okay as players like with you know hey maybe i'll take the tier three thing because i need an item this week and eventually i'll either replace it in a raid or this is sort of a stopgap because i did all my mythic zeros in the first week and i didn't get an item in this slot so we'll, right. we'll, we'll borrow this like crafted piece right for now so no, um, I, I think that's it's good. I think the other thing too that you touched on a little bit, um, is the whole skilling philosophy that they're changing, right? So in the same blog post, they talked about the fact that like typically the way professions have worked is you eventually work your way up through all your skill points, and then when you finally get to the the, the max the max level, that's when you get to do the max level thing, right? You get to craft your all the flasks are at max level, cauldrons are at max level from alchemy, right? Um, you know all your your best gem cuts are are at max level, um. Uh, for like, jewel crafting is not still a thing. Um, yeah. but, uh, but in any event, um, that's the way that professions have always worked is that at the max level or max rank is when you get the max things. So what they're talking about is that essentially by midway through your skilling, you will have every recipe you need, basically. Yeah. Um, you don't need to go past basically halfway up the skill point tree. Um, and basically what they're saying that'll do is it will stop two things. It'll stop you just having to craft things to craft them for skill points. So you want to, you'll be able to make more impactful items. You'll make items that you think you'll use or you can sell. Number two, it won't flood the market with things that won't matter, right? Like right. You see most this of the market leveling. starts with... You see yeah. this a lot with leveling gear right now where there's like a, just a bajillion of the leveling eye level items. So they're worthless. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So just, it's not a way to do it. So this is a, I think this is a really cool change too because then you can also start to craft things for skill ups. Like there's still progression after you are making the the fun stuff so um so yeah and i think the the other thing too um 
or sorry, I think that was the one thing I want to talk about. I don't, oh, I guess the final piece, um, since we're sort of slowly running out of time here, is they are introducing something new for Alchemy called Files, um, which are essentially l- different buffed flasks, right? So they're, they're, they're kind of like flask in that they count as both a battle and guardian elixir, but they're not like flask in that they're only 30 minutes and they do weird things. Like some of the examples yeah. they gave was like a versatility increase, a uh, intellect increase if you remain stationary, um, and then like a, an intellect increase if you like aren't near any of your allies. Okay, right? so I just want to, uh, I'm going to like, I think, so briefly, I think this is kind of cool, but that last one cannot go live or it cannot be good. Like one of the two, it either has to be bad or... Or it can't go live because those of you that don't remember, there is this trinket from Opulence in BFA called Sliver oh, yeah. that was like, oh I don't know God. what Are they, they did just... when they were tuning that trinket, but holy shit, that was the most toxic trinket for raiding where you had like, you had a sliver stack and it was all of your ranged, all of them. So you had to yeah. like trade slivers to your hunters so that they could stand in the sliver stack even though it was giving them intellect because it was better for them to be able for the raid to have like the eight other people using the intellect sliver and then the hunter just like not screwing up their sliver so good now this may be way more limited because it doesn't say other allies that they're also using file of charged isolation like sliver that was a thing right. you could only stand with other people that had the sliver trinket so that led right. you to have like a sliver stack it may just be that this one is naturally bad because you you can't do it in raid and if you have too many people doing it you have to spread too much and there's just not space um, yeah but oh my god i don't want that one to be good i don't want to yeah do it yeah this is and i think this adds i mean it, it's just a quick little preview it's like two paragraphs on but i think it'll be it'll be interesting to see if these are like i i foresee this hopefully being like the out in the world doing like questing or or whatever it ends up being right type like things that you use and then like the typical flask of like here's main stat are um are uh your chat um and the typical <laughs> i have so guilty now I lost my, my chat right now <laughs> now i lost my train of thought but but or like the and the typical flash of like main set increases are going to be like the the raid type things you use right these files become like the you know either smaller group content or just like out in the world doing stuff type um yeah type thing so yeah um so yeah so no it's it's a again i think profession wise the preview is is like we said started this it's extremely lengthy probably longer than any other preview they've given on a system in yeah. a couple of expansions now and um and it's really i mean in depth and it seems like they're taking professions in a direction that like to be fair i'm never going to interact with this like i'm i'm gonna maybe use the work orders to buy things that i need but like i'm not gonna care about having the best yeah leather working thing i I don't know i mean like (laughs) on the flip side like for me back in cataclysm i was really big into doing auction stuff and i like was one of the two or three major scribes on my server and i was one of the first ones to get one of the very desirable new minor glyphs that they added in one of the cata patches and so i was able to make a killing on that for a few weeks before other people rng their way from the crafting research into that item um so that was that was awesome and i liked that and it was also a huge headache because of having to maintain this like huge diverse inventory of all like hundreds of different glyphs and then trying to post them all it was a huge 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 headache um work orders actually solve part of that for gear not for consumables like glyphs but for gear because right. you don't have to maintain a big inventory of the different uh, crafted pieces. You can just go and, like, somebody requests it, and you go and you, you fill their order. And you don't have to fill 100 bag slots with all the different stat combinations of helms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I'm, I, I kind of got burned out on Professions, this expansion, because of trying to do leatherworking legendaries in 9.0. And I... I 
you know, got through rank two on everything that the guild needed, and then we just ended up doing guild bank transfers for the rank fours anyway. And mm -hmm. I just like haven't touched crafting since. Absolutely have not touched crafting since. Uh, I do like armor kits now because sometimes they creep up in price and it's just cheaper to craft them. But other than yeah. that, I don't, I don't mess with it. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to like getting back into it in in 10.0. Um, one additional thing I wanted to mention before we wrap up, uh, I don't know, people that haven't really engaged with crafting this expansion may not realize, but there's actually been a crafting, like, points buff or bump every tier. Like, the number, the max skill level you can get for, like, leatherworking has gone up by 25 each tier. So we're normally, Oh, I didn't realize that. It was uh, 75 points to max out leatherworking in Season 1. In Season 3, it's 125 points, if I'm not crazy i'm pretty sure that's how it works um so that's another way that they can make it scale from tier to tier it's like add new higher eye level recipes that then require higher crafting you know have a soft requirement maybe of higher crafting skill that then you know your crafters your dedicated crafters then can rank up their continue ranking up their crafting in the new patch and that becomes a limiter towards crafting the new best stuff and then everybody kind of and it's just leveling up and yeah yeah, going, yeah that would be yeah i guess that they could do that like the increase in the ranks yeah i mean we'll see like i i also i mean i i am alchemy and enchanting on any character just because i want two hour flasks um or to make mana pots when i forget them and then i want to just disenchant gear and sell the mats because it's easy. like for me being like the afk person i am mostly outside of raids it's the easiest two professions to yeah. Make money while you raid in. Yeah. Um, also, alchemy is nice for the double flask duration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I only use one, and then uh, I can, yeah, just I, I don't ever, yeah, I don't ever run out of flasks. We'll say, um, which is, which is cool. So no, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Maybe this will be my like, maybe not return, but I'll start, uh, maybe caring more about. Probably, I, I'm not going to. I'm literally not going to. But maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll pull me back in. Um, yeah. with this so um I'm, but cool yeah. no I, i'm, I'm honestly, really excited I mean, about this yeah yeah you know i think i mean everything like there's not i think we talked not maybe not talked about this but there's not a ton of new stuff i think coming in dragonflight in terms of like overhauls or brand new things but i think the stuff that is is coming in particularly professions talent trees eventually for monks um i think it's it's some really cool stuff some like yeah yeah, some interesting things. So, I mean, I think the the professional stuff that they have described gives me a lot of hope because of two things. First, it seems fairly well thought out. Like they thought through the different mm -hmm. things that could happen, the different issues that they could run into. And two, it seems like they've actually taken the lessons from crafting in Shadowlands and crafting in previous expansions and taken those lessons and said, "Okay, we have to learn from these so that we do not like legendaries in Shadowlands are massively unpopular. It like the the way that you craft them is massively unpopular. People do right. not like going and spending huge amounts of gold to buy these legendaries. And so they are like, well, if people are going to have to interact with crafted gear next expansion, we got to make sure that the gold outlay is actually reasonable for them to do. And so and also that they're not like pressured into buying them when the prices are highest at the start of the tier so that that leads you into stuff like the materials, the soul god materials costs and, and things like that. So it's very cool. Um, I'm also hopeful that this will fully replace the BOE system, like no more BOE drops from raid or like minimal BOE drops from raid. And instead you get your crafted pieces. Um, kind of nice. Uh, that would yeah. be okay. But yeah, this is this is all all very cool as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I am, I am definitely excited for this and I think yeah, I think the um I think they uh I think I'm more excited for next week, I, I'll be honest with you, and and some actual information on Dragonflight. It'll be fun to to see what they launch with, right? Like how many zones are open, yeah, like what additional classes, you know, we're gonna see uh, what yep. systems are gonna be live. So no, um this upcoming week should be should be pretty exciting if you are into World of Warcraft. I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. So Yeah, yeah. Very, very hyped for this coming week. Yeah. Um, but I think that is going to be it for our show today. Thank you all for watching and or listening. Now, my guildies are bullying me in, in Twitch chat to come and 
play mage in a key for them. But jokes on them because I have D and D after this. Um, <laughs> if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to support it and the other work that we do over at the Pika Serenity, you can do that over at our Patreon at patreon.com slash Pika Serenity. And of course, you can come and join the lounge, uh, regardless of whether you're a patron or not. Brew Lounge, I think, might finally have finished talking about F1 for the day. Uh, so you can talk about Brewmaster stuff. Imagine that in the Brew Lounge. Can't even hey, fathom it. Um, <laughs> But that's it for the show today. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you next week. Bye.